In this video, we are going to look at mathematics paper 2 for the year 2020, and uh, we are dealing with a paper that was written by the internals. Now, this video is the first part for this paper because it is going to cover questions from section A. Now, let's look at uh, the first question. Uh, question 1A, given that matrix A is equal to 5 to uh, x, find the, the value of x for which A has no inverse. So, let's look at uh, this statement. So, say a matrix, a matrix with no inverse, with no inverse has a determinant of zero. So that is the key point. So here, the determinant is zero. Or in some books, or in some papers, you may be given that, find the value of x given that the given matrix is a singular matrix. So whenever you hear the word singular, Singular also means that the determinant is equal to zero. And whenever the determinant is equal to zero, you cannot find the inverse. Now let's look at the this question. So the original matrix A we have um, five, two here, two here, x here. Now we want to find the, the determinant. So we first have to identify the major diagonal. So from the major diagonal, we have elements like 5 and x. Then in the minor diagonal, we have elements such as 2. Then the formula, the symbol for the determinant is this. So determinant of A. <coughs> will be equal to 5 times x minus 2 times 2 <coughs> excuse me then how can we find the value of x so where there is the determinant here we are going to substitute with 0 so we put 0 here 5 times x this will give us 5x minus 2 times 2 will give us 4 then what I'm going to do is, let me first begin with uh, this expression, 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. Then here we are going to collect the like terms. So the like terms, this negative 4 will shift to this side, giving us 5x is equal to 0 plus 4. So what is 0 plus 4? is just 4 then we divide by 5 also by 5 so x can be just like that as a fraction or if we divide the 5 into 4 we get 0 0.8 now let's check if our answer is making sense so you know that our original matrix is this one <coughs> Then here we have 0 0.8. So we've uh, substituted x by 0 0.8. Now let's say we want, we find the determinant of uh, this matrix. So 5 we multiply by 0 0.8 minus 2 times 2. 5 times 0 0.8 will give us 4 minus 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 4, we are going to get 0. So our value of x is quite okay. So we are done with this uh, question. Now let's move on to Roman number two. Roman number two, we want to find the, the inverse of a if x is equal to one. So let us uh, write the matrix. Now where there is x, we are going to put uh, one since we are told x is equal to one. So if we have one here, now we need to find the, the new determinant of A. So let's look at the determinant of A. Then the determinant of A, the major diagonal, are these numbers 5 and 1. So we are supposed to multiply these two numbers. Then we subtract the product of the elements in the minor diagonal. 
so if we multiply 5 times 1 we get 5 multi then 2 times 2 we get 4 if we subtract 4 from 5 we get 1 so this is our our determinant our new determinant when x is equal to 1 now after we are done finding the determinant we are supposed to write the formula for the inverse so a inverse is equal to so the formula is 1 uh, divided by the determinant of which we have the determinant multiply by the adjoint of matrix C A. Since now we have the formula, the determinant we have it, the remaining part here is we need to find the adjoint of matrix C A. Now how can we find the, the adjoint of matrix A? So uh, the key point in major diagonal swap the numbers so the numbers we need to interchange the position of the numbers so 5 will go where there is 1 then 1 will go where there is 5 so 1 will come here 5 will go there then for the minor diagonal you don't interchange the position you just have to change the signs so this will be negative 2 and also here will be our negative 2 then let's see how we can simplify this so we have 1 over our determinant is 1 then our uh, adjoint we have it so adjoint is 1 5 negative 2 negative 2 so this is our final answer if you want you can say 1 into 1 is 1 times this so the inverse of this particular matrix will just be the adjust uh, adjoint of matrix C uh, okay. now let's look at uh, the question uh, two now question two we are dealing with a uh, probability question and uh, we are told a bag contains seven red and three white identical balls two balls are taken from the bag at random one after the other without replacement Question one, no? draw a tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes. So, before we look at uh, our tree diagram, first uh, let's look at uh, how many outcomes uh, that we will have here. So, there are two outcomes because uh, we can see that uh, there is a chance of picking a red ball, there is a chance of picking uh, a white ball. Then if we are to add the total number of these balls, it will give us 10. Now after knowing that we have two outcomes, we can now go to our tree diagram. Now this tree diagram, this tree diagram will only have two branches. Why two branches? Because there are only there are uh, only two outcomes so we are going to have two so consider this as our first peak okay then we need to draw another with two branches then we'll consider this as our second peak so this is our second peak here then let's see even here we are going to have another uh, branch with two branches then what else okay so after we are done we can now indicate the probability so here we have there is a chance of picking red chance of picking white so here we are going to have red white red white now if we look at the, the possible outcomes since we are told to show all the possible outcomes we have to look at this so this it will give us the probability of picking two balls of the same color which is red then here we have a bit of picking red and white here we have white and red 
here we have white and white or two balls of the same color which is white now after we are done with this let's go back to the numbers so the first part before the first peak here you do not have to make any change to, to the original numbers so remember we 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 there, there were 10 red balls over the total is always 10 so i mean there were 7 red balls over 10 then white is 3 divided by 10 so the first peak here you just have to consider the original number with the actual total but uh, since the condition is given that when uh, um, the two balls were picked one after the other they did this without uh, replacement as long as there is without replacement uh, you need to make some subtraction now how do we do these uh, subtractions so the first one here we don't know the ball that was picked first so we want to assume that the ball that was picked without replacement is red. So if, for example, in a bag you pick one ball and you consider it to be red, how many uh, red balls will remain there? So we are going to have six red balls over. What is the total? The total will also reduce to nine since there is one that has been uh, removed. If red is the one that is picked, how many balls are for white? We still have the same number. It's 3 over 9. Why? Because we are assuming that it's only red that we, we assume to, to be picked. Then for the other branch, you do opposite. So instead of uh, affecting red this time, let us affect the white. So say it was white that was picked. So it's 2 over 9. Then if it was white that was picked, then we need to have the total number of uh, the red, which is 7 over 9. So I'm sure you can see the pattern here. So this is our answer for this uh, probability. Now, we can now go back to look at it. Roman number two, find the probability of taking at least one white ball, at least one. So the word at least means that uh, as long as there is one letter, whether there are two, three, as long as there is at least one white. So it can be one or greater. So would say probability at least one white will be so we need to get the first one this this plus c this plus c this so we are not going to include the rr since in rr there is no w now the first letter here like this first w represents the first before you do the substitution that's a pattern here so the first w is 3 over 10 multiply by the second w you need to take the one that is it uh, that was affected so it's 2 over 9 plus here the first w it's 3 over uh, 10 times 7 over 9 plus then red so red is this number here 7 over 10 times this one 3 over 9 okay so after that let's see how we can make these calculations 3 times 2 will give us 6 over 90 plus 21 over 90 plus 21 over 90 so here we can see that no need of finding the lowest common denominator because we already have so we just we are just going to add the numerator so 6 plus 21 plus another 21 
So 21 plus 21 is 42 plus uh, 6 we get our 48 over 90. So this is our answer. If we want we can uh, reduce 2 into 48 to give us 24 over 2 into that to give us 45. Which number is common? 3 is common. 3 into 24 will give us 8 over 3 into 45 will give us 6. Uh, 15 okay so that is one way now let's say we can also find the same answer but we'll say uh, for a bit of at least the key is at least one white so what we can do that what we can do here is we know that uh, the probability of these chances it must add up to one so if we can subtract the probability of picking red red then we'll be able to find the same because if we subtract red red then the remaining chance or chances are for at least one so it's one minus c let's go to red red so red red here we can see that the first arrow is 7 over 10 times here is 6 over 9 we know that 7 times 6 will give us 42 over 90 so the probability of uh, picking two balls that were ready is 40 that is 42 over 90 now here we need to simplify this uh, these fractions so over lowest common denominator is 90 1 into 90 is 90 times 1 that is 90 minus 90 to 90 is 1 times 42 is 42. 90 minus 42 will give us 48 over 90. So we can see that we are still getting the same answer here. Then if we reduce this, will also give us will also give us 8 over 15. Then we can move on to this question. Question 2 A of the 115 students who attended an, an end of year party 72 took Fanta, 93 took Sprite, 87 took Coke, 61 took Fanta and Sprite, 71 took Sprite and Coke, 60 took Fanta and Coke, and 50 took all the three uh, drinks so we are dealing with the uh, question for sets here okay so question uh, Roman number one illustrate this information on a Venn diagram okay so what is our first step here so step number one is it draw a rectangle so that is our first step rectangle so a rectangle is this one here then after we draw the rectangle we need to consider the sets that we are going to have so we can see that we are going to have this set for Fanta sprite and coke so we're going to have three sets then before we draw the three sets we need to make sure that if we have this the intersection of all the three sets we have this point here so as we are drawing these three sets we need to make sure that they all intersect at one point so we need to have the intersection of sprite fanta and cock okay so now the first one we we'll consider this one to be fanta then here we we'll just say this is our sprite then we have our cock here then according to the information so we know that 50 took all the three drinks so i'm going to put the 50 here since 50 is the intersection 
of all the three sets. So that is the first number that you are supposed to uh, enter onto a Venn diagram. It is the intersection of all the three if you have. Then after we are done with the intersection of all the three, we can now look at T, the intersection of two. So we need to look at the intersection of two. So the first one, we can see that Skisti took Fanta and Coke. So let's say we have this is our Fanta and Coke. So we we'll say Fanta and Coke. Then here, the intersection of Fanta and Coke is Skisti. Now from that uh, Skisti, we already have 50. So we are supposed to subtract uh, 50 from 60 we have 10 so here we are going to have 10 so that if we add 10 plus 50 we still have the intersection of uh, these two uh, will be equal to uh, 60 then the, the other step here is 71 took sprite and the cock so sprite and cock the total is 71 now from that 71, we already have 50. So the key point is the intersection of all the three sets is part of the intersection of two. Remember that. So you need to subtract for you to indicate where we are going to have the two uh, drinks only. So uh, Sprite and Coke, Sprite and Coke is 71. So 71 minus 50, we get 21. We put here. So this means that 21 took spread and cork only. 10 took fanta and cork only. Then 61 took fanta and spread 61. So we subtract 50, we have 11. So this is our 11 here. So 11 took fanta and spread only. Then after we are done with the intersection of all the three sets then we we are going to look at uh, Fanta let's first begin by Fanta only Fanta so from the uh, number for the Fanta we see that it's 74 to Fanta now from that 74 we can see that we have 11 is part of Fanta 50 is part of Fanta 10 is also part of Fanta. So what are we going to do? We are going to add these numbers. So 10 plus 50 plus 11 will give us 71. Then we subtract 71 from 74. So from 74. So this means that we are going to have 3. So this 3 is here. And this 3 indicates that the, there were some students that only took Fanta only. If the question is how many to Fanta only, it's three. Now let's go back to uh, Sprite. So Sprite is 93. Then from that 93, we have 11, 50, and 21. So let's do math. 11 plus 50 plus 21. So I'm getting 82, 82 minus 93, 93, I'm getting 11. So this means that we need 11. So this 11 is here. This means that 11 students took Sprite only. Then from Coke is 87. Now from that 87, we are supposed to do the same. We have we already have 10, 15, 21. So 50 plus 10 plus 21 is equal to 81 minus 87. 87 is equal to 6. So we are done uh, putting these numbers into these three sets. Now, we don't know if these numbers that we've indicated will add up to the total 150. So we have to see if these numbers will add up to that dot. So what are we going to do? Let's make the addition of this number. So we have 3 plus 11 plus 11 plus 10 plus 15 plus 21 
plus c six. So three plus c eleven plus eleven plus c ten plus c fifty plus c twenty one plus c twenty one plus c six. I'm getting one twelve. Let me try again. Three plus c eleven. Plus C eleven, plus C ten, plus C fifteen, plus twenty one, plus C six. I'm getting. I'm still getting one twelve. So this means that the number of students that participated in drinking the three types of drinks were just one twelve. Now, if the total was one fifty, where is the other three? So this means that. The three, the remainder three must be indicated on uh, not you need to indicate this on the outside of these three uh, sets. So this means that the three students, they were three students that did not take any of the three types of drinks. So we are done with that. Then we go to row number two. How many students took a uh, none of the drinks? We already have that answer. So A, we have none, none of the drinks, so it's 115, the total, minus 112, that took, then it's 3, or oh, the key point is a number outside the three sets represents those that did not take part. Then let's look at for B. For B, we just want those that uh, took Fanta and Sprite, but not Coke. So our interest is we want the students that took Fanta and Sprite, but not Coke. So what does this statement mean? This statement is the same as we want the number of uh, students of Fada Union uh, Sprite intersecting Coke complement. Why is Coke complement? Because whatever that is in Coke is not needed. So if we are if we are to shed if we are to shed the Coke let me see if I can try to give you a picture here. So since the cork is not is not needed, let's say if we are to shed this, I'm shading this so that I remove C. We can see the numbers that are remaining. So it's C three, eleven, another eleven. So that is it. That will be our answer. So it's C three plus eleven plus 11. 11 plus 11 is 22 plus 3. 25 students that took Fanta and Sprite but not Coke. Then you see at least two different drinks. At least, at least two different drinks. Now with the word at least see, So this will be, we just want uh, where there is it, two. So ten took uh, Fanta and Coke, eleven Fanta and Sprite, twenty-one Fanta, I mean Sprite and Coke, plus C, fifty. Now whenever we have a condition like at least, even those that uh, took three must be included. So it's ten plus eleven plus 21 plus 50 so i'm getting 92 according to my calculation so that is our answer for this one now let's move on to okay so we have a question based on the vectors in the diagram below avc is a straight line ab is equal to vector 8p s is equal to 4p plus 9q BV is equal to negative 6P plus KQ and 
the length AM is equal to MB. So this means that M is the midpoint of AB. Or M is dividing AB into two equal parts. So whenever we have that condition, you just have to know that uh, in the, the vector between AM will be equal to BM. So we just have to divide it. Eight pieces is the total of AB. Now let's look at the first question. So the first question is uh, question A. We want to find vector AM. Now vector AM, we just want to move from here up to here. Since M is the midpoint because of this, so midpoint is half of the, the, the original vector, which is AB. So what is the vector AB? We have it, it's 8. So AM will be half of 80P, which is our final answer here, will be 4P. Then for question B, we want vector AV. So let's go back to our diagram. So AV. So we want to move from A to V. We'll move from A to B since we have the vector. Then B to, to V since we have these two vectors. So AV is equal to AB plus BV. Now what is the vector AB? We know it's 8B. Then plus C. What is the vector for BV? We have been given it. It's negative uh, 6P plus KQ. Negative 6P plus KQ. Okay, we can now simplify. So it's 8P minus 6P plus KQ. So these are like terms. We can add. So we'll get 2P plus KQ. So that's our answer. Then given that, Roman number 2, given that, AV, AV is equal to H, A, C. So we have the vector for AV, this vector. We are going to do the substitution. Now let's look at if we have the vector for AC. Let's go back to AC. So from A to C, we have the vector. It's 4P plus 9Q. So we can also do the substitution. So this is equal to 2P plus KQ is equal to what did we say s is 4p plus 9q so 4p plus 9q okay then after this let's expand we are going to expand the right side because the left side is expanded already. 2P will not change. KQ will not change for now. Then we can multiply H times 4P will give us 4HP plus H times Z, 9Q will be 9HQ. Now the question, the question is, Find the numerical values of H and K. So, what to find the numbers for H and K? So, after we we have we've arrived at this point, how can we find the value of H and K? So, here we need to look at uh, on each side. There is an expression where we have P, and also there is an expression where we have Q. So, we are going to equate. 2p since there is p here you equate to this expression where there is p so which is 4 hp then k 
k cube there is q here we equate to 9 h cube then from there we can uh, solve for which one can we begin with let's begin with the h so you know that uh, we can divide by p also p so that if we cancel we have 2 is equal to this this we have 4 h so to solve for h we can divide by 4 also by 4 so h will give us if we reduce 2 into 2 is 1 2 into 4 is just 2 so it's half or if want we can leave it as a decimal 0 0.5 then let's go to this so we can cancel q you only cancel the letters that you can see on both sides so it's 9 h so since we have the value of h we can now do the substitution here so this is equal to 4.5 so we are done, we have found the values. We can now go to question 3a. Solve the equation x squared minus x minus 19 is equal to 0. Giving your answer is correct to two decimal places. So here we are dealing with the a quadratic equation. So let's make let's make sure that it is in standard form. So in standard form is uh, where the ax squared plus c bx minus i mean plus c is equal to zero so you can see that uh, this is the format that we want this question to be so we know that uh, the value of uh, x squared is a b x uh raised to the power is b then uh, the number here is uh, c so what is our value of a a is the coefficient of x squared 1 then b will be negative 1 c negative 19 now let us apply the formula so the formula will be x is equal to minus minus c b plus or minus then square root of b squared minus 4ac everything divided by 2a now we can do the substitution so x will be negative what's our b negative 1 plus or minus here it's negative 1 squared what's our a it's 1 c it's negative 19 divided by 2 times 1 okay so if we expand negative times negative will give us positive 1 then negative 1 squared will give us positive 1 now this negative times this negative will give us positive here 4 times 1 times 19 so 4 times 19 will give us 76 so we have 76 over 2. Now, here we can't find the, the square root at this stage. First, we need to make sure that there is only one number under the square root. So 1 plus 76 is 77. Then we can now look at the square root of 77. So square root t seven seven is giving me eight point seven seven four nine six. Okay, so this would be one plus or minus eight point seven seven four nine four. I mean nine e six four three eight seven over two. Then after that, we can separate into two equations. One will carry a positive, then the other one a negative. So this will be x is equal to 1 plus 
six four three eight seven over two then the other value of x will be x minus eight point seven seven mm, this should be four nine six four eight three divided by two so if we add here we'll get nine point seven seven four nine six four three eight seven over two so now let's divide by two so if we divide by two i'm getting a four point eight eight seven four eight two one nine four now we can remember that we are told to leave our answer correct to two decimal places so we just need two numbers after decimal then after the last number here eight we have seven so we're going to add seven i mean one will add it only eight so this will be four point eight nine now let's do this so one plus this will give us negative 7.7 7, 7. Uh, this would be 7 4 9 6 4 8 3 divided by 2 let me let's do that mathematics so 7.77 7, 4 9 7 6 4 83 divided by 2 so I'm getting negative 3.887484821 so our x will be negative 3.89 so these are our solution many solutions here now there is one thing that I want to clarify here uh, if you may be maybe a victim of um, uh, a misconception about these quadratic equations that some people will be told that always you need to have a positive and a negative no you may have a positive and negative you may have a negative negative or positive positive maybe let's try to uh, show this diagrammatically so if you remember in the paper one we look uh, we looked at uh, the quadratic equation where we have uh, the parabola with the small shape and the frown shape. So let's take it for instance. If our our shape, our equation, our curve is like this, so we can see that uh, here we are going to have uh, the x-intercept at even here. So we're going to have this. Now the question is: Are these positive or positive? Uh, a negative or negative negative or positive positive so we can see that for a quadratic function or for a quadratic equation with such a, a graph or curve will definitely give us two positive values so the x value will be positive the other x value will also be positive so the key point is a quadratic equation may give you two positive values for x Okay, what of how can we produce it? We how can we have uh, a negative? Maybe let's change this time. Don't worry about uh, where it is opening, whether it is opening downward or upward. The key, if uh, one point is touching on the negative side, the other point is touching on the positive side. Here we are going to have one x value will be negative, the other x value will be positive. That's a key point here. Then for the other one, if you want to, to have the negative coordinates, I mean, or yes, or coordinates, we are going to have like this. So that is, so to summarize, we are saying the solution of a quadratic equation can be all positive or negatives or positive and negative. Now let's have a look at question B. Question B, we can see that we are looking at 
uh, a flowchart. Start the flowchart below. Start enter L is L less than zero. If yes, any error L must be positive or else no. So now the question here, if we had to scroll down, the question is we want to write a pseudocode corresponding to the flowchart program above. So now a pseudocode is written in a readable statement. So let's begin. The first word that you are supposed to write is start. That is our first. Then you need to be guided by the flowchart. So after that, what came after start? It's enter L. So we say enter length. Okay. Then after that, we have this. So this changes to instead of is, we we'll say if. If length, if length less than zero, that's what we were supposed to write there. So say if length less than zero. Let's see the options. So we have yes. So the yes is then. This should be written as then. Then what are we supposed to do? We we'll have a paragraph here. So we'll say then then it simply means yes. You say display display error. Then L must be positive. Then what else do you have? So we've indicated the yes, so we go to no. No will be followed by else. So else goes with the no else. Else will say enter height. Because we can see that there is this one. Then we do so. This will be if height is less than zero. That's what we are going to write there. So we we'll say if height less than zero. Let's look at what we have. Where there is height. So here, this is it. Then. What are we supposed to do with display also? So say then display error H must be positive. By now we have the concept, so say. Or else, oh, and I forget, I forgot else. So I need to have the word else. Else and so same. Now let's, let's go back to our diagram. So else is here. There is nothing like enter. So we just have to look at the formula. So you see, volume is equal to one over three times uh, length squared times height. So say else volume is equal to one over three times length squared times the height. So we can see that after this, what do we have after? This we can just say display volume stop. So here you say and if display volume, then what I 
you're supposed to do you stop so that's what you can do. now if for you to have the picture for more information on this i advise you to go through the past papers you check how these questions then how that comes you'll be able to get the concept now we move on to question five a and b so begin with the 5a so our a our question for a is 2 minus 18 p squared over 3p now the question is we we are told to simplify so how can we simplify this so we can see that the denominator is simplified already so we can just see factorize the upper face for now so say factorize factorize by by grouping i mean by grouping them okay since we have grouped it so we'll say factorize by common factor so we we'll first look at the common factor so what is common between 2 and d negative 18 p squared is 2 2 is common then here we have 1 minus 2 into 18 will give us 9p squared over 3p plus 1. Then after we are here, we can see that the, the numerator can still be factorized. So here you are going to factorize by difference of square. So difference of square or two squares okay so now the first part that we are supposed to do is we need to make sure that each expression is raised to the power two so one must be one squared we know that one squared is same as one then nine we can nine the square root of nine is three but this is three squared p squared over three p plus one now if we have uh, a squared minus b squared if you want to find uh, the diff to factorize by difference over squares you do this you open these parentheses you write b here i mean a here another a here plus minus b here b here that's a pattern and make sure that whenever you are, you are using the difference over squares make sure that the sign is c minus if it's positive this cannot be applied then you need to have to use some other methods now since we have uh, the picture of how the difference of squares works we can now proceed we can now proceed so say we need to open these two pairs of brackets so one will be here the other one here plus minus three 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 then p p so you can see that this and this these two are same so we can cancel our final answer is two one minus c three p so we have I have simplified this problem now let's go back to uh, question e, b the first three terms of a geometric progression are m minus 2 m plus 1 and m plus 7 find Roman number one the verse the value of a so m minus 2 is our first term m plus 2 is our second term m plus 7 is our third term now, how do we find the, the value of a given letter whenever we have this under GP? So we are uh, we know that the common ratio is second term divided by first term is equal to if you had to divide third term over second term. So what's our first uh, term? Our first term is my m minus c two. Our first second term is m, so say m plus c one over m minus c two is equal to third term m plus c seven 
over m plus c1 then if you reach here you cross multiply and put these in brackets so we cross multiply so m plus 1 we multiply with m plus c 1 m minus 2 with m plus c 7 then at this point expand so this m we are using algebra m times m is m squared m times z positive 1 will give us just m 1 times m is just m 1 times z 1 will give us z 1 m times m is m squared m times 7 is 7m negative 2 times m is negative 2m negative 2 times positive 7 is negative 14 negative 14 then after we are we have reached this stage then we are going to say collect the like terms then we have to make sure that the numbers numbers without letters are on the same side and the letters with numbers are also on the same side so whatever okay before we do that we can first simplify these two alike terms also these two alike terms so we can now set m squared plus m plus m will give us 2m plus c1 m squared then here we are going to have 7m minus 2m will give us 5m minus c14 then here we can collect the like terms so we shift every exp uh, expression with m on the same side so this will move to this side even this to move to this side then one will go to this side so here we have m squared if this m chain goes it will be m minus c m squared minus m squared plus c 2m minus c 5m then minus c 14 minus 1 okay so these two can cancel positive 2m minus 5m will give us 3m then we will have negative 15 divided by negative 3 negative 3 m is equal to positive 5 now let's go back we know that our first term is m minus 2 second term m plus 1 m plus 7 so now let's find the actual values so we want we want the the actual value so the first value is m minus c2 then the other value is m plus 1 then m plus c7 so now that m is 5 minus c2 5 plus c1 5 plus c7 so here will give us 3 comma 6 comma 12 so our first term second term then third term now what is the question uh, roman number two common ratio so let's solve for common ratio so common ratio is equal to second term over first term or third term over second term so second term is 6 over 3 our common ratio will give us 2 even if we use 12 over 6 we still get 2 then what is the other question the sum of the first six terms sum of the first six terms so since 
the common ratio is greater than one our sum of will be this formula a r to the power n minus one over r minus c one so sum of what is n n is equal to six our a is our first term which is three common ratio is two raised to the power six minus one over two minus one so what is uh, two raised to the power six is sixty four minus one over two minus one is a c one sixty four minus one is sixty three over one so sixty three times three I'm getting one eighty nine as my final answer so now let's go to question uh, six i'm sure this is our last question here the figure uh, below is a thruster of a cone the base radius and top radius are 10 centimeters and 5 centimeters respectively while the height is 12 centimeters take by as 3.142 calculate its volume so let's find the, the volume of this so we are first going to use it the, the the volume in terms of the difference between it, the volume of the big cone with that of a small cone so for us to find that first we need to find the, the height of the smaller cone so we consider this height as our x so how do we find the, this x value so the formula is like, like this is it height of the smaller cone over height of the big cone is equal to radius of the smaller cone over radius of the larger cone so height of the smaller cone we don't have we just say x then for the larger cone is whatever the letter that you are using plus c the given number so it's x plus c 12 then here we are going to have 5 over uh, 10 cross multiply so here will be x will multiply by 10 5 will multiply by x plus 12 so 10 times x is 10x 5 times x 5x then 12 times 5 this is 16 then we can collect the like terms here so 10x minus 5x is equal to 16 10x minus 5x will give us 5x is equal to is equal to 60 then we divide by 5 also we divide by 5 so x what is it? 60 divided by 5. We still have 12. We still have 12. Here, how come we are getting 12? Okay. So here is 12, 5 over 10. Okay, we are correct. So now, this means that the height of the big cone will be 12 plus 12, which is 24. So this means that this whole distance will be 24. Now, since we have the enough data, we can now go to the volume. So say volume is equal to 1 over 3 pi. Then open brackets. Radius. So say radius squared times the height minus this times the height so this is equal to 1 over 3 what's our pi 3.142 then the radius of the larger cone is 10 centimeters so this is 10 centimeters squared then the height the height we say is 24 minus the radius of the smaller cone is 5 centimeters 
is 5 centimeters so 5 squared then the height is 12 so volume is equal to this is 3.142 over 3 then 10 times 10 is 100 times 24 so we get 2000 400 minus 5 times 5 is 25 times 12 getting 300 here 3.142 over 3 so if we subtract 300 from 2400 we are getting 2100 we can divide the 2100 by 3 we are getting 700 then 700 times 3.142 3.142 getting 21 99.4 cubic centimeters so that's our volume now we can also find the same volume now let's say this time we we want to find the volume without finding the height of the smaller cone so the formula is this so the formula will be volume is equal to pi over 3 then radius squared plus radius molecular squared plus radius times the small radius so this will be it's 3.142 as our pi over over 3 i've forgotten it we are supposed to have h here so over 3 then for this height you just have to get the the height of the thruster which is 12 so we have 12 here then radius is 10 squared plus 5 squared plus 10 times 5 so 3.142 times 3 is 1 3 is 4 so multiply by 4 then you have 100 plus 25 plus 50 so that's our volume so 3.142 times 4 getting 12.568 then 100 plus 25 plus 15 getting 175 now 175 times 12.568 I'm getting 2199.4 cubic centimeters so we can see that we are able to get the same value so for questions like this one you can use any formula of your choice so that's it for this video thanks for watching